Caitlin here. Obviously, you fought in Abu Dhabi before. You fought in pretty much the rest of the division at this point. So now that you're fighting man and uh, in, here in Abu Dhabi, how would you compare her to your past opponents that you face in the octagon? Um, I think I fought so many, so many different fighters that um, I've kind of seen it all, uh, which is an advantage for me. You know, this is I think like my 16th UFC fight, and I think all but maybe two of them were top 10. I, I don't know if like many other fighters have done that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, everyone at this point in my career, every, everyone I kind of fight is looking to get past me to the title shot. So, and they're super hungry, but you know, I, I, it doesn't phase me. I've, I've, I've been here, I've seen it. And that, that there's a reason why I'm still at the top of the division for so long. Do you like that position where you're kind of the one that people have to get past to get to maybe Valentina? Or if they might've, if you weren't there, they didn't have already had a title shot at this point. I mean, I'd prefer to be in, in Valentina's position, to be honest, but uh, uh, if, if I'm not there yet, then uh, it's not a bad place to be. I mean, I think for me, it's it's been uh, almost two, over two and a half years since I fought for the title, so I've had seven fights in the UFC since, um, six and one since then. If I win this fight on Saturday, it's a five-fight win streak, so I think... Um, you know, a win on Saturday would kind of change my position a little bit to maybe be in the conversation for another another title shot. And looking at, I, before we get back to this fight, um, a lot of the flyweights that we've interviewed over the last several months have all said the same thing, like Val the blueprints out there for Valentina. Now. Do you agree with that, or do you think maybe Valentina wasn't 100% in her last fight? Um, I don't know. I mean, it, it's a tough position for her to be in where, you know, she's fighting five rounds all the time. And when you're like so dominant, if you have one little moment where you're not dominant, everyone, you know, highlights that instead of all the other things. I mean, at the end of the day, she won. And that's kind of all that matters. And, uh, speaking of man, it seemed you guys were matched up for the Paris card. And then it, I think one of you, I think you pulled out and then Jessica Andrade came in and then they rebooked this, the match for Paris for putting it on here. What exactly happens with you coming out and coming in for that Paris card? Um, I never pulled out. I never originally took the fight. Um, I was coming off my last fight. I had a couple injuries, and um, I wanted the fight to be... I wanted to take the fight if it was pushed back a little bit, but obviously they wanted her on the Paris card, so they gave it to Andrade instead of pushing it back for me, which was understandable. But um, I didn't pull out. I, like I said, I never took the fight. Uh, I think people were confused about that. And then, you know, Andrade got hurt and then I was like fine I'll take it and let's let's go let's fight in eight weeks in Paris and um yeah then she got injured and got pushed back so we got to where I originally wanted to so it was perfect did you want to fight in Paris or are you happy that it's in Abu Dhabi I wanted to fight in Paris I just wanted to go there um I think that was the main reason for wanting to fight there um you know my coaches were like ah, I should not really. She's the only girl from Paris. It's the first event in in France. Like, uh, you know, maybe you should not fight there. It's not the best for, you know, with the judges and everything. But I was kind of excited for that. I've never really fought, like, I've never fought, like, the Brazilian in the in Brazil. You know, I never had that experience. And, you know, to me, I'm like, well, I'm going to win. So it would be kind of cool to experience that. But, um, you know, overall, this is probably better. Uh, Caitlin? Yes. Uh, just on your left over here. Where? Oh. Hello. Um, Alexa Grasso said recently that she'll be keeping a close eye on your fight. Um, just wanted to get your thoughts on whether you watched her last performance, what you thought, uh, if you'd entertain a fight with her next, or is it a title shot that you want after this one if you get through it? I mean, obviously, uh, you know, if I had a choice, I would prefer the title shot, but, uh, you know, I never say no to any fights. I take them all. So, yeah, I would prefer that. Um, well, prefer the title shot, but I would I would definitely take that fight if that's what I would have to do. Um, I thought it was a good fight. It was very close. I kind of... I have to rewatch it. The rounds were so close, it could have gone either way. I kind of thought that Viviani won, but, like I said, it, so many... All the rounds were, like, pretty much of a toss-up, so it could have gone either way. Um, I'd like to fight her. Everyone talks about how good her boxing is, and I, I think my boxing's a lot better. So, for that aspect, I'd like to I'd like to take that fight. Good luck. Thank you. Caitlin, uh, right here. Frankie Edgar is having his retirement fight next month. Um, I just want to, you know, someone who has worked with them for so long, just get your thoughts on the career and the legacy he's leaving behind, and what it kind of means to you to see him finally walking away from the sport. Yeah, it's a, it's bittersweet. You know, some fighters, you kind of know when, like, their time's coming to an end. He's been in it for so long. But, uh, yeah, I feel like 
the the only thing is, I, at first I was like, well, I don't want to be like training in the gym and he's not there. But even if he, this is his last fight, I have a feeling he'll still be there every Tuesday for sparring, every Saturday. He kind of, you know, he had like two years ago had like a hip replacement. No one even knew about it, and he was like on the bike at the gym like two weeks later. Like at the, you know, he's just definitely different. Um, you know, all of us that train in, in New Jersey, he's definitely our, our, our captain. We kind of look to, look up to him and have since I was like an amateur and I would see him. And it's, it's just crazy to see him doing the same exact thing, same exact training schedule that he was doing, you know, before I was even a pro. And it, it's definitely a, an inspiration. And I think not just for me, but everyone else that, that trains there, we since day one we just try to mimic what he does and his hard work and uh yeah it's, like I said it's bittersweet and kind of want to always see him see him in there I can't picture him not fighting Great answer. Thank you. Kevin here um it's not hiding that you have too many Armenian fans both in country Armenia and also in USA and what does that mean to you to be supported by the Armenian fans Uh, it's been amazing since my first, I remember my first UFC fight I got done and, um, you know, I posted up a, a picture and it was just like flooded with Armenian flags and it was just so cool to, you know, I was born in America and my whole life there and I've like never had any of that kind of support there and just seeing like the amount of support that I have from everyone from Armenia has just been, been so crazy. I wish, uh, my, my grandfather would still be here to see that he would just like, he would go crazy to see that. Thank you. Yeah. Good. Good. All right. Cool. Thank you.